Well, we'll have one more uh, recording here for chapter two. Just one more thing I want to get to. And then just some fundamental concepts and assumptions when it goes to financial statements. Okay, so let's see. I'm a corporation like Walmart. And I've prepared financial statements. I've then issued them to outside third parties. They've been audited, of course. And there are certain assumptions that go into all financial statements when I prepare them and issue them and give them to external third parties. Okay, And a lot of information is right here in the book about the external audit on pages 44 and 45. That kind of goes with what I just got done talking about. Make sure you read that the role of auditors versus the role of managers and the conflicting uh, needs that each party has but ultimately auditors have a lot of power because they hold the power of a qual of an unqualified or a clean audit report okay but then when it comes to accounting fundamentals there's a lot of key ones mostly on page 47 so make sure you read through these the going concern assumption is basically just the belief that our company will be operating for the foreseeable future unless we become aware of something different happening. Okay, So we will assume that our business will be um, in business tomorrow and the next day and as far as we know uh, the accounting rules change if we decide to liquidate. Okay, So we're just going to assume that when we do accounting for now that our business is a going concern. Next is the monetary uh, measurement concept and remember that we're using the US dollar and we're measuring everything on the concept of the US dollar. Okay, We take things and quantify them into dollars. Next is arm's length transactions. Okay, a, An arm's length transaction is basically two parties agreeing on a price. Okay, um, If I've got two related people or two related companies that may not be arm's length because one maybe is um, giving up a price at the benefit of another. But arm's length means two businesses, each with a profit motive, um, negotiating and agreeing on a price. Okay, So basically we're rational and we're free to decide what the terms of a transaction are, selling price, financing, so on. The cost principle just keep it this, think of it this way that most assets are recorded at historical cost. That is what we paid to acquire the asset. The reason we use historical cost, it's very easy to substantiate. If I buy a new delivery van for my business, right, I have an invoice from the dealer that says, here's what I spent to acquire the van. There's no question about the cost. I've got supporting documentation to prove what it cost. Then finally, separate entity means that we need to separate um, the owner's personal finances from the business finances. They have to be completely separate things. So, you know, in a corporation, obviously, it's very easy to imagine that that's the case. Now, it might be a little bit harder to imagine, let's say, a small business with a single owner, um, even if it's like a daycare out of your home, you still need to make sure that you have a separate business checking account that's separate and, and separately identifiable from the owner's personal account. Business bills get paid with the business account, business revenues go into the business account, and then same with the personal account. Personal bills, personal revenues go through that account. Okay, So it's very easy to mix them at that level, but we have to make sure we have separately identifiable checking accounts to separate personal from business transactions. Okay, And so that's what I wanted to get through for chapter two. Um, there's a lot of really good review at the end of the chapter. I just want you to be aware of that. Pages 48 and 49 um, have some really good review activities in them. Summarizes the accounting equation, summarizes the financial statements, what each one does, why it's important. Um, and then there's always some really good terms at the end of every chapter also. The terms and concepts are there on page 50. Okay, So just be sure to review that, read the chapter. You might have to read it more than once. And then um, once you feel like you've got a fairly good grasp on the material, 
the next thing that you would do is log into Cengage now and then do your chapter 2 study plan um, and that will give you um, a pretest where it will kind of test you and say what do I know about this based on how you do on that study plan I'm sorry that pretest it will then give you a study plan which you can go through as much of that as you want and um, just start learning the concept of the chapter just doing them over and over again and then finally you'll end up doing um, a post test to see did I learn did I do better than the pretest and you will you study and, and listen to the lecture and uh, read the chapters you will do better and then once you're at that point you feel like you know the material then you can go and start working on the chapter two problems that I've given you that are worth 30 points for completing the chapter two problems. Remember that the, the study plan part of every chapter is really on your honor. It's really up to you um, how much time you spend on that. Okay, so that will do it. If, as always, if you have questions for me, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you.